Moses was an Egyptian. Sigmund Freud, Moses and Monotheism. Hello and welcome back. Chapter 21 relates the second half of Camacho's wedding. It opens with Sancho's hyperbolic description of the bride Quiteria, which focuses on her adornments as the means by which she transcends her peasant status. By my faith, she's dressed not like a peasant, but an elegant lady. His final vision of her layered beauty is a triple metaphor. She's a beautifully gilded girl who could make it past the banks of Flanders. The allusion to the banks of Flanders refers to dangerous sandbanks near Flanders, to bankers of Flanders, and to a bed made of Flanders pine. Sancho means that Quiteria can overcome the difficulties of marriage and conquer the heart of someone as rich as the merchants of Flanders. His comments suggest the love story might be an allegory for international, religious, military, and economic relations. At this point, Basilio arrives and halts the ceremony. He wears a provocative black cassock with fiery red strips. He also wears a crown of funereal cypress and carries a large staff. He seems diabolic or perhaps condemned. His jealousy and his deathliness recall lovers from part one, such as the doomed Grisostomo or the agitated Cardenio. Basilio makes a dramatic speech in which he alleges that since Quiteria has married him in secret, so long as he is still alive, she cannot marry his rival Camacho. Then he sticks his staff in the ground and pulls off its top half, revealing a small sword. Finally, he shouts, long live rich Camacho, long and happy years with the ungrateful Quiteria and death, death to poor Basilio. Then he throws himself on the sword in an act of romantic suicide. Did you know? Rodrigo de Cervantes, the younger brother of the author of Don Quixote de la Mancha, was killed at the first battle of the dunes on July 2nd, 1600. With Basilio in the throes of death, the priest rushes to give him last rites, but he refuses unless Quiteria will grant him a last wish. Under no circumstances would he confess until Quiteria gave him her hand as his wife. Quiteria is at first catatonic, stolid as a work of art, harder than marble and motionless as a statue. But at Don Quixote's insistence, as well as that of the priest and the crowd, she consents. Even Camacho gives his blessing. The motive is that if Basilio dies before confessing, he will be damned to hell, giving every indication that he would die like a heathen and not like a Christian. But as soon as they are pronounced husband and wife, Basilio springs to his feet and removes the sword from his body. At this, the crowd is astonished and proclaims a miracle. Miracle, miracle. But Basilio rejects their metaphysical impulse and asserts his own ingenuity. Not miracle, miracle, but resourcefulness, ingenuity. This is one of the more emphatic exchanges in the entire novel, on par with that of Thoraida near the end of part one when she declared herself to be named Mary. It's easy to imagine this passage inspiring the materialism of Hobbes or Hume. We now learn that Basilio faked his death by guiding the sword into a hollow metal tube filled with blood. By the way, we will see several other mysterious staffs in future episodes. When the marriage between Basilio and Quiteria is revealed to have been deceitful, the wedding risks becoming a civil war between rival bands. This recalls the recent battles between Don Quixote and the Knight of the Mirrors, and between Corchuelo and the Licentiate, as well as the allegory of the struggle between love and interest. Camacho's and Basilio's supporters face off. Camacho and his party took vengeance into their own hands, and unsheathing numerous swords, they rushed toward Basilio in whose defense in an instant were unsheathed almost as many more. Don Quixote immediately mounts Rocinante and brandishes his lance in favor of Basilio's clan. Meanwhile, Sancho hides behind the giant earthen jars from which he has eaten his fill. He took refuge among the earthenware jars from which he had savored such agreeable broth 
for the spot seemed so sacred to him that it must surely be respected. Note the sacred power of jars produced by moriscos at El Toboso. What does the crowd shout when Basilio jumps to his feet? A. A ghost, a ghost. B. Miracle, miracle. C. Industry, industry. Correct answer, B. Miracle, miracle. Don Quixote urges calm. He points out that all is fair in love and war, even drawing a classical equivalency between the two. Be advised that love and war are the same thing, and that just as in war it is legitimate and customary to use tricks and stratagems to defeat the enemy, so too in the struggles and competitions of love. Finally, he challenges anyone who wants to oppose the marriage between Basilio and Quiteria. He will first have to get past the tip of this lance. The priest also reasons with Camacho's clan such that there now occurs a true miracle. Camacho and those partial to him were calmed and pacified, and they signaled as much by returning their swords to their sheaths. When Basilio's followers return to their village, they invite Don Quixote, esteeming him to be a tough and courageous man. Only Sancho is dismayed. The narrator's description of the squire's sadness is a sophisticated allusion to the exodus of the Jews from Egypt when they escaped slavery during the reign of the Pharaoh. And thus, he left the flesh pots of Egypt behind, although his soul carried them with him. This makes for an ironic parallel between the Jewish nation of the Old Testament and Sancho, who is usually an old Christian proud of his ethnic and religious purity. That's all for now. Be sure and watch our next video. Don't miss out on the adventures of the ingenious gentleman Don Quixote de la Mancha. To enroll in the course, click on the novel. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on Don Quixote. To watch more videos, click on Dulcinea. And to follow us on our social media, click on Sancho Panza.